Hello, and welcome to this lesson on vector components. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to find unit vectors and what they are, and also how to calculate the magnitude of a vector. So let's start by setting up an axis, and I think I've got one yeah, stored there for us. So let's suppose that we have a vector r. And that vector comes from the origin out to some point in space. That's r. That point has some x component, some y component, and some z component. What we can do is sort of say that r is composed of this x bit, this y bit, and this z bit. So that's going to look kind of like this. If we have a vector coming out of the origin, let's call that vector x, then a vector coming from the origin along the y axis, we'll call that vector y, and a vector coming up out of z-axis, call that vector z, we can say that the vector r is equal to the sum of these vector components, x plus vector y plus vector z. So that's how we handle direction, but what about magnitude? Well, that's where unit vectors come in. And a unit vector is just a vector with a magnitude equal to 1. So in three-dimensional space, vectors have three unit vector components. So we could say that we have an x component of length 1. We'll call that a sub x, a y component, also of length 1. We'll call that a sub y. And a z component, uh, we'll just call a sub z. So let's do a quick little example to show how vectors are composed of unit vectors. So if we have a point, let's say 1, to three, right, a really simple point, and that's somewhere up there, that's point P. There's a vector that connects to that point, we'll call that vector R sub P. So we can write that vector R sub P is equal to one times the vector A sub X plus two times the unit vector A sub Y plus three times the unit vector a sub z. And that's all there is to it. So each of these guys is a unit vector, and we multiply them by the coefficients for the x, y, and z components of that vector. So from that, we get a general form of our vectors. This is the one we'll hang on to. So that vector f is equal to f sub x times the unit vector a sub x plus f sub y times the unit vector a sub y plus f sub z times the unit vector a sub z. So let's do one more example. And let's say that we have two points now. We've got a point P, let's keep that same point, one, two, three. So he's out here, and that's point P. And we have a point Q, that is at 2, minus 2, and 1. Uh, so that's going to be somewhere out there. Right? And we may have vectors that connect each of these points. That's Q, so that would be vector R sub P. And here we would have a vector R sub Q. What if we wanted to find a vector that connects the two, sort of a vector R, P, Q. So that's what we're going to find right now. So the formula for that is, let's just do it this way. If we have R, a vector that connects two points, A and B, then that's equal to the vector at B minus the vector for A. So, putting that in practice, R of P and Q is equal to RQ minus RP. And let's go ahead and work it out. Vector R of P and Q is equal to RQ, which is 2 times the unit vector A sub X, plus, excuse me, minus 2 times the unit vector A sub Y, plus 1 times the unit vector a sub z minus 
the whole vector, 1 times a sub x plus 2 times a sub y plus 3 times a sub z. So from here it's just algebra. Vector PQ is equal to, this first part stays unchanged, and we see that the negative sign distributes minus 1 times a sub x minus 2 times a sub y minus 3 times a sub z. Now we can use the distributive property to get our unit vectors where they need to be. So we'll have 2 minus 1 times the unit vector a sub x plus negative 2 minus 2 times the unit vector a sub y plus 1 minus 3 times the unit vector a sub z. So finally we get that our new vector that connects p and q is equal to just the unit vector ax plus, actually minus, 4 times the unit vector a sub y minus 2 times the unit vector a sub z. So there we go. So that's how we compute a vector that connects two points that aren't the origin. What if we need to figure out the magnitude of a vector? So the magnitude of our vector f is given by this formula. The magnitude of f is equal to the square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus fz squared. Pretty simple. And also, if we want to find a unit vector in the direction of the vectors we're looking for, so we might have, let's say, let's call that the unit vector A sub F. So it's a unit vector, a vector with a magnitude of 1 in the direction of F is just going to be the vector F over the magnitude of F. So let's do an example of finding these guys. Here's our example. Find the unit vector extending from the origin to a point G at 2, negative 2, and 1. So the first thing we need to do is construct that vector. I'm just going to call that find the vector g. And all that is is the vector g is equal to 2 times the unit vector a to x minus 2 times the unit vector a sub y plus 1 times the unit vector a sub z. Step 2, compute the magnitude of g. So what we have is the magnitude of g, let's give it in our general form, is equal to the square root of g sub x squared plus g sub y squared plus g sub z squared. So that's equal to the square root of 2 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 9. So the magnitude of g is equal to 3. And finally, compute our unit vector a sub g. Now in general form, a sub g is just equal to the vector g divided by the magnitude of g. So that's going to be equal to 2ax minus 2ay plus 1 a z over 3. So finally find that the unit vector a of g is just equal to 2 thirds a to the x minus 2 thirds a to the y plus 1 third a sub z. And there we go. That's how we compute our unit vector. And that is the end of this lesson. So we talked about all the way back over at the top, we talked about how vectors are composed of smaller component vectors that fit along the axes, that those vectors can be further simplified to be unit vectors of magnitude 1, and so each vector is just a collection of some coefficients multiplied by the unit vectors. We found this general form, the vector f is equal to f of x times a sub x plus f of y times a sub y plus f of z times a sub z. Um, we did an example of calculating a vector that connects two points. And we saw an example of finding the magnitude and the unit vector for a particular vector. F, the magnitude, is equal to the square root 
of the squares of the individual components, and the unit vectors is equal to the vector divided by its magnitude. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.